Hi, I'm Dr. M. Kamakshaya, open source software evangelist and also a full stack, freelance full stack web developer uh, using Python or Java for full stack web applications. I mean, f full stack applications is my passion. I do this in order to help my students, also a few corporate clients in providing uh, POC. Uh, for the past a few days, I've been searching for some certain web, uh, valid web content in support of a particular concept as how to create dynamic inputs inside a web application. Uh, quite a few times, or rarely, we do often need a particular strategy where the users will try to uh, uh, generate a set of uh, input uh, widgets and also, I mean, after generating a set of uh, inputs and uh, users also often would like to remove one or few of them in order to manage their web applications just like uh, the one I created. I'm just going to demonstrate you a small application. There is a lot of information online uh, but all the information is related to uh, I mean all this information is created by the Java community. Uh, we might need JavaScript or jQuery or maybe a couple of other Java related uh, technologies in order to create the dynamic inputs in the web application. But I thought uh, there might be a way we can also do that with the server level, I mean from the server side, just merely using HTML and CSS. In this video cast, I'm just going to show you how to create the inputs dynamically just merely using HTML and CSS with the help of a backend server. Uh, I'm just going to use Python for my server level logic and I am just uh, going to depend on HTML and CSS to create the dynamic web applications. First let me show you how to what is my plan for this video. Suppose uh, if you are working on a web application where you would like to create a set of inputs just like this say for example if I press 3 and then uh, there will be 3 uh, input uh, the, the 3 text inputs and if I uh, suppose if I want four and I must be able to create four text inputs or maybe I mean in place of the text input you can imagine radio or maybe checkbox some radio button or maybe checkbox something like that the input may be different but uh, the strategy is the same so by merely based on user input just like this the users must be able to create uh, a set of inputs it doesn't matter whatever it is uh, and after suppose if I want to remove one of them just like say here I have five and I want to remove one and then I should be able to remove one and 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 create another set of uh, inputs uh, such a way that one will be one will be detected from the and uh, the list of the application something like this I must be able to reduce one of the inputs from the list something like this uh, I was going through online tutorials but it was very difficult inputs uh, in web applications using Python something like this but they're all uh, Python but they're all not uh, there, there is rarely a, a video which demonstrates us how to use the Python or maybe or, or several level uh, tools uh, but there are quite a few applications from the client side there are there are uh, quite a few I mean uh, video content or web content related to Java, JavaScript, jQuery and all but it is not possible for me to search for the web uh, content related to server side logic. I mean I am just uh, trying to uh, talk about how to manage dynamic inputs from the server not from the front end not by the client. We can do this activity from by, 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 by doing something from the client side. I mean we can write the programs client side programming we can make this possible through client side programming but not from the server side programming. But uh, today in this uh, video guest I'm going to show you how to uh, manage the same mechanism from the server level programming. Okay so without much uh, further description let us start uh, doing the work.
I'm going to create my project in uh, I'm just going to create a folder I assume that you know the fundamentals of uh, flask uh, programming I mean flask is one of the micro frameworks available inside the Python uh, available for the Python program programming community uh, especially to make the web applications I just call it as dynamic uh, inputs um, and I'm just going to as usual uh, I'm going to create the a folder for templates uh, so as I said uh, I assume that you know introduction to basics of uh, web development using Python and now I'm going to create uh, a server file usually it is called app dot py in Python now I'll be using uh, autumn for my project and just uh, I'll just uh, get my project inside the autumn editor and now I'll start writing the program from from flask import I need uh, flask render template because we'll be using templates HTML templates for this uh, and then request I think this is sufficient now I'm going to initialize my app flask and then name. and this name is going to be the main application now let me finish if name is equal to main then then run the app and I'm going to I'm going to start my application from debug mode or using debug mode I'm just going to create an, a router I'm, I'm going to create a decorator or a route which means a server address app route and this is going to be the the starting of the server and this is I'm going to use uh, uh, HTTP request for this route I will use both uh, get and post and I am going to develop logic for this route using Python uh, function with the def statement return render template and then I call index dot html now we need to pass the results now since we created a template let us go to the uh, templates folder and then create a, a decorator which means a front end a user interface and now what do we do I create a dev element and then inside this I have to manage uh, I'll put uh, write I'll put a paragraph write required number here okay and then I provide an input the name of the input is going to be the while okay now break and then submit button okay this is going to be submit so and then save save my server file and see that everything is saved now I think this is sufficient in order to render that template now let's I think my server is already running I think I should go back a couple of DIR now I should go to this folder mm, CD dynamic inputs now I'm going to start my server Python think I'll show you there there is an app kind of thing here and Python app dot pi so if everything is okay then my server should start now once the server starts let me go to the 127 this is the flask address flask is going to start uh, yeah right required number of now whenever I press some number here it should be right now it is not going to do anything because we did not add any logic 
uh, I mean, we didn't, we didn't tell anything, anything to the server as what to do soon after we input this number. And I'm going back to my um, uh, server. I mean, file app app. I'm going to now. I need to find a strategy to use this number and create required number of inputs. I, I'm going to create the same text uh, input app route now I call it as the list input list something like that so that it makes and again I need to make it because I'm going to make some submissions in this route so I use both get and post very famous HTTP requests in web development def I call input list this is the logic side now if request method is equal to post now whenever we submit some value then take that value request into this and make a variable request form now I, I don't know what is the value of this val now this is going to be the val and now give that val back okay return render template and then import list this is just a html i mean decorator it's not a decorator actually it is a ui front end for users uh, value not uh, val is equal to val okay so this uh, value i'm sorry val is equal to value but the problem is, you see here, this value is not an integer. See, so yeah, I'll just uh, print type value. So I'm sure this is not an integer. I'll I'll run this first and let me show you. Now three. Okay, 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 okay. Fine, fine. I think I disturbed my. Now let me press 3 and submit. Now come back. Oh, that value is not there because, uh, okay, let us create the route. I didn't create the route. First let us finish that route kind of thing. We need to create this um, HTML page in template so that the uh, server identifies. And then we'll try to redirect that. Uh, so what I do, I'll just take that val. I print that val here. Now refresh. Three submit. It's not going. Nothing is happening. So we should be. Oh, okay, okay. I just printed it, but I didn't tell. No, I think I have. Value return. Run it template input list HTML val value. So it should be able to print value. Surval, so surval so value. Yes, something is. If request method is post value request form val. Where is the val? This is the val. Then, then the same val. Type the value then return render template input list HTML. I guess I did a mistake here in the index because okay yes I did a mistake now this is should be inside form otherwise you don't understand whenever we submit that should be recognized input list that is out and I have to put inside the forms then whenever we submit uh, and that value in order to recognize that value that should be inside the form then only it is because this form is going to redirect and print that value somewhere. Now, I think this time it should work because app we are giving val and that val is going here and it will be printed in index. We got we are redirecting this form into input list. I mean, soon after submitting this number, the form should be able to redirect it to the input list and there we should be able to see the value. Okay, now I think refresh three submit yes you got the three right 
now what we are going to do we are not going to get the three we are going to print the three input values there now let's just just very simple work now i'm going to use jinja logic for i in range yeah i think i thought of showing you what is this value yeah value is a string so we may not be able to uh, iterate uh, over on a string we should make convert that into an integer now um input i this i is this one then input text name is going to be again input i'm just going to i'll tell you why i'm doing this break and then um end for loop and see what's going to happen and for set this val we have to convert that into integer because this is a string okay now value is equal to int value it's very simple in python now let's refresh then press 3 you see you get 3 this is what i am not able to figure out from the server side logic there are a lot of quite a few videos as how to create this uh, achieve this activity using jquery or javascript but there are very rare videos uh, there there's, uh, there is hardly any content which talks about how to create dynamic inputs using server logic okay now what i do so i could create uh, the inputs dynamically um with the help of uh, user input you can use uh, 20 so that you'll get 20 something like this now we have to figure out a particular way to suppose I after I create four by mistake I realize I realize that by mistake I created four in fact I want three one thing I can go back and make three but that is not going to achieve the I mean that is a barbarous way of doing the things so in most of the situations what happens is that there will be a button and soon after you press that button the number of inputs should be reduced to something like that now what happens uh, we need to uh, make a kind of mechanism like I'm just going to render a button and uh, so that whenever a user press that button the number of inputs should be reduced to one or you can also make it to two or something like that but for that what happens i am just merely going to i'm just going to make use of the server logic not from the client side programming uh, to do this activity you have to know javascript or jquery or angular react there are many but I'm trying to demonstrate the virtues of Python, how handy Python. You can do many wonderful things using Python backend programming. I am showing you how to manage all this uh, when client side activity merely by using the server level logic, something like that. Now I'm going to make a button here. In order to make the button, I need to create, whenever we create a button, we need to make a form and inside this form I'm going to put the logic and here I make a button and I call this as submit I'm just go going to use submit button and the value is going to be remove which means remove one something like that now let us go back and see if we have a button or not yes you got remove now nothing is going to happen because we have not added any logic to this for that what we need to do I am just uh, going to here is the logic this is what I'm going to do now here after this I'm just going to create one more input ch list change maybe change something like this and same thing is going to be I use the same name as for the definition and I usually make the same so that I avoid all confusion I mean you can choose different names but I don't want to messy my activity and 
uh, I don't like to take the risk of uh, wasting my time. Now we are going to make the post request because we'll be just pressing this which means we are going to post uh, the value and now whenever we make a post request then request form what is the name of this is input so copy and now uh, go back here we have a beautiful function called get list okay now we are going to request the all inputs let me show you here if you go for page source you see you will find the name of the this is input input inputs now there is a list of inputs here so we have to get back the values of this whenever somebody submit the values using this form and those values will be retrieved uh, with the help of uh, name of the input in Python and for that we got a beautiful function called get list input now you see this input is uh, it should be the list of inputs we do one thing we print that list and see what's going to happen here I call whilst and it is going to be the value is correct now since we created a route we also have to make a, a template for this I'm going to change dot HTML and here for time being what I do I just print that value and show you what is that going to be okay think change input list change okay now whilst value value now here what I do I print type value okay let's see what is the kind of input that is coming from that route that is what is the intention of I'm just going to make a print of it it is while whilst I'm sorry did a mistake okay now I'll go back press some number five and I'm going to I just I don't submit anything I'll make a oh there is a URL manual please check I think our scheme is not working here why it is not working ah uh, yeah same mistake we did we have to redirect that to this route input list change we fail to redirect the control there is no index.html right it is there but first let's check okay now go back oh again there is several i think i should be doing some mistakes somewhere annoyingly input print type value input list change html yes change html vals value well, this value is coming here into the vals now it should go why this load is not working input list change change vals if you observe this is just going back to the index html i think that i don't have that at all i mean index html is something so i think i need to restart my server that is there to reconfigure the project and this time i'm going to it's again going to index html where do i have i don't have index I don't have an extension list input list change action. So when I'm pressing this remove and it should go to input list change. Input list change. I had restarted but it is yes okay this is what I think uh, I have to restart a couple of times that uh, something went wrong it is quite natural in web uh, web development and several times we need to shut up the server and also start the server in order to make our progress steady okay now so the inputs are coming suppose if I press something mm, let's see if I'm going to get these numbers yes now what happens I have to remove one of the input list one of the inputs from the input list by if I press remove now it is very 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 simple 
uh, I think now I should be able to print list as yes, correct now what is going to happen I am just going to create the length of the list okay and that is going to be the well that is again going to be value let me not length of value this value is a list I've shown you here this is a list now we are going to find the length of the value and we are going to decrease that length to 1 value minus 1 you see and now that value we are just going to now here from the front end what we are going to do we are just going to create a form again I think we don't need form because this time we are not going to create anything yeah I just create a division a div element and inside that I'm going to make the same I should copy paste right okay I have to copy paste I'm going to remove because it should look exactly the, the same way right it is while and here a whilst I call this as while so that um, save everything and now change the while range while and it is going to be the value minus len and it should be integer I'm sorry int okay value one and I think everything is okay now so so go back see if you yeah server is on and then refresh now let's go back let us come from from the beginning and now remove exactly so this is what now let us create 10 and if I press remove now instead of remove 7 remove 6 remove 5 remove 4 remove 3 beautiful fantastic isn't it so this is what uh, so now I've shown you how to figure out uh, oh <laughs> bag is going forth okay this is what I would like to show you we don't need uh, all those very I mean time is very precious and we can't afford to spend too much time on different languages and I was just trying to I was working on dynamic uh, inputs creating dynamic inputs inside web applications for some certain client uh, requirements and I was searching for a kind of uh, you know web content maybe the form of tutorials it was not possible for me to figure out using the client uh, and with the server with the help of server side logic there were many uh, I mean tutorials related to client side programming but server side programming is was not there then I sat before the system and figured it out for the past two days hope this uh, uh, video is very much uh, I mean if you think it is useful then press like button stay tuned to the new content and also kindly don't subscribe to my video channel thanks again for watching this video